So I wanted to have this conversation with you specifically um, because I was working through some things. Um, The the Wendy Williams four-part series on Lifetime, I have not watched it because I cannot watch it, right? Um, I participated in in a documentary called Wendy is a Mess or Something uh, when she was semi-lucid. And I interviewed her here on Urban View. We did like a kind of town hall where I... I, I've, I I knew something was going on, but I, I've known something has been going on for a while. Right. Um, because I've spent a lot of time with her, you know, not just five books, but I was in her life in a way that um, where, you know, you have to navigate distance uh, at the same time. There has to be a level of trust and intimacy. And um, both she and Kevin, who's not related to me at all, and that's his name is Kelvin, um, because I actually do have a brother named Kevin. Uh, And watching it, though, what what I'm struggling with right now is the demons. And and I'm going to talk about demons in a real way. Right. Um, Because I I do believe that they they're here. Right. And they they're in people and people, you know, manifest. So somebody I was talking with a friend of mine, they were like, um, you should reach out. And, and I was like, I don't know what I could do because from my understanding, it is ask, seek and knock. There is something in a person that should compel them to want to get help. People, you can't drag people to help and you do this for a living. You can't drag people to help. You just cannot. They have to want to be helped. Right. Mm-hmm. And then they were like, well, th- they're in a diminished state. So how would they know that they need help? And I'm like, there are moments of lucidness where you will, you know, cry out for help and it's in the act of asking for help. But there's a lot of pride and there's a lot, there's a lot going on. There's a lot more going on with this than just a simple case of conservatorship and, you know, uh, infidelity and because that's been going on forever. Uh, The baby, yes. And that, that's not what broke her. Just so much going on. She lost her mom. There's a lot happening here. And everyone's got an opinion, but I just wanted to ask you about, you know, the, when, when people are so full of everything and there might be some mental health apps, absolutely some physical things going on, you know, dementia brought on by, I believe drugs and alcohol forever. What is our responsibility to, to people in our community, in our lives, friends, family members, how how should we be navigating people? You know, it's such an important question, Karen. I've had thousands of people at this point ask me, what am I to do, whether it's my child or my partner, a parent, um, where, you know, where does it begin and where does it end? And a part of what you're talking about is we can love someone, we can care about them, we can want the best for them, but we can't make someone want the best for themselves. Um, th- those are our limitations. And so, you know, where do we intervene, if at all? Uh, and some of this has to do with what our role is. Uh, do we feel responsible for someone? You're talking about people have said to you, you should reach out. And some of that may be their fantasy that if you reach out, you can do something. You can make something happen. And it's very hard for people to realize, no matter how dynamic someone is, how powerful someone is, that unless that person makes a decision, we're talking about a choice. And I don't know you know, whether Wendy is in a position you know, in any of her 24 hours during the day to choose something that she wasn't able to choose when she seemed to have a choice, like a real chance and choice. So what do we do? We actually practice good self-care, realizing that we can love someone, but loving someone doesn't mean that we should, can, uh, are able to do anything to change their the, the, how they live, how they die, uh, you know what what it is they are manifesting, and so it is a part of really maturing to be able to let someone suffer and mm-hmm. care, but not 
make the suffering now become yours. All right, I'm going to ask you to put on your pastor hat for a second. Yes. Um, Six six eight zero one eight two five five because you know, I was talking with several friends and you know we prayed and I said what what if thousands of people prayed at the same time you know a mighty prayer and it's and it's wild because these airwaves were you I I believe that these airwaves are the tool of Satan I want to say that uh, this I really believe television radio all all of these mediums social media are tools that that uh, that can give uh, demons an entry uh, point into people's psyche lives if they're open to it and I'm saying this to you because um, you'll appreciate for me i'm i'm counter programming every day with intention because i recognize these same airways life and death is in the power of the tongue i want to breathe life every day that i open this mic into the people that are listening because i believe that this is more powerful to to it's harder harder to penetrate because it's so much of the other thing that feels normal but it's not normal to to be gleeful in people's suffering and to be you know uh so inundated with other people's lives and into all of the gossip that's not normal i don't think that's normal or very very human i think it's, it's demonic so i want to ask you if everyone prayed you know w could that have an impact you know, that's a, that's again, that's a great question. If everyone prayed, could there be an impact? And the question is, or the response is yes, but who would the impact be for? That does not mean that the impact would manifest for Wendy to change, whether she can or she's able, whether her chemistry has been so, um, traumatized and and really harmed. But what would happen is, and this is what is really important to understand, collective prayer can change me, the prayer. It can change something in how I'm living, how I am dealing with truth or feeding into lies. And so sometimes we want to think about prayer and we want to decide where the manifestation of power will land. And what I'm saying is it can make a huge difference, but we don't know who it will change. And it may be me who doesn't have dementia, me who isn't struggling with drugs and alcohol, but maybe there is something hidden and buried in me that might be set free in that prayer. And I think, and that does not mean that Wendy could not be uh, met. The other thing is I often ask people when they say they are praying for someone, I'll ask, what's your prayer? Like, what are you actually praying for? And one thing that I don't often hear that I'm encouraging people right now, if you wanna pray, pray for courage to do the work. Pray for courage to do the work, your work, whatever Wendy's soul and body work and mental work may be, the people who are around her, courage to do the work. Mm -hmm. And the work requires truth. You know, I just want to say something about demons as well. There's a passage of scripture where there are a number of them, but one where the question is asked, what is your name? And we don't often think about, and, and we're not talking about my name is Robin and your name is Karen. Mm -mm. No, no, no. What's the name of you evil one? Maybe it's jealousy. Maybe it's insecurity. And so part of what I hope we will talk about today is what demons, however one understands that, we want to know what's your name. Okay. I, thank you. Uh, we are in alignment. So I want to say this for, for those of you who are not, you know, this is not my thing. That's fine. Um, but these are internal conversations that I have quite frequently and I want to have them externally and publicly, right? There's a demon called pharmakia that's mentioned in the Bible. Pharmacy, uh, we, we know pharmaceuticals, drugs. Mm -hmm. And 
like we never just like food, which can be a drug or can be nourishment, you know, drugs can be healing or can be death. You know, pharmacia in the Bible is is witchcraft. It's it's a demon. Right. And so to you, um, I think that scripture that you're talking about, you have to be able to name that thing to call it out to then vanquish it. Right. Well, yeah, if you're yeah. going to call something out in the name, you have to know what the thing is, right? Absolutely. So we have to name it. You have to name it. And a lot of times we don't want to call a thing a thing. We want to call it something else. We want to say, oh, that person isn't mean. They're just tired. So if I can't identify and call meanness out, the spirit of meanness, if I can't call the spirit of sexual abuse, what it is, well, they just get a little inappropriate when they've had too much to drink. That's not what is happening. It may be that alcohol unleashes more freely that crossing of a boundary, but there is something that we need to be able to name so that we know what we are wrestling with. Yes. All right. In your in your practice, right? Because you, you wear, well, I think it's the same hat, but you wear them differently. You know, sometimes it's, you know, cowboy hat. Sometimes it's a baseball cap. Sure. But you, you know, you put you, it's the same hat because it's rooted in the same spirit. You know, how do you navigate that with people who are unbelievers, right? So if they, you know, come in with no connection, I almost look at it the way, People don't, we just had a conversation about Lat, Latinos and, you know, we were talking with Natasha Alford about her new book, American Negra. And it's like, there are folk that just don't understand the impact of the system of whiteness that has us all in a grip. Mm -hmm. And anytime you talk about it, it's like, oh, they, you know, it's denied, 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 because some of them benefit from it. But the, the truth of the matter is everybody's aspiring to it because you've been conditioned to aspire to something, right? So even stripping away that, I look at it in the same way, is so hard. We're talking about elections. Folk are adamant, they're adamant, but they don't see beyond that, like just such a bigger picture. And the frustration is like, oh, you're so stuck. How do we get people unstuck so that they can be full? And yeah, hard? you know, and part of Karen, what you're also talking about is even racism it is a spirit it is a, i mean the the spirit and the construct of whiteness it is a it is evil however one understands that so when you said you know what do i do and how do i interface with people who are non-believers the issue is whether not whether a person is you know a practicing whatever they are i mean christian or muslim or or Jew, Buddhist, the issue is if they are committed to the spirit of truth. Because it is the spirit of truth that liberates us from lies. It's the spirit of truth that allows us to call something what it is, even when it makes us so uncomfortable, even when it makes us full of shame, it is the commitment to truth. And so my work is really about inviting people to engage, not in a religious sense with any thought. It is to engage with truth. Mm -hmm. You know, there's also a, a passage of scripture that talks about uh, a demon possessed man. And, and I like to, you know, make it gender, whoever, demon possessed person. And it says that when the demons were cast out of the man, they went into the swine, into the pigs. And it says that the pigs then went, and what did they do? They drowned themselves. So we want to think about something that is taking us under. You know, things that are actually drowning us. And we call it, like when you said it's not normal, there are things that aren't normal. That is true, but there are things that are so familiar. So they're not normal, but I know them well. I know suffering well. I know what it is like to drown. And so that's a spirit that unless we can articulate what is going on, 
this is not something we can intellectually, um, solely intellectually reason with. It really requires a deep knowing that there is something operating. And that's why I said racism and whiteness, it's a system that is rooted in evil. And that's why we can't just get rid of it. That's why people are clinging to it. That's why it is drowning this country because it is a wicked spirit. 866-801-8255. Someone in Nubia says they feel sorry for Wendy because she's trapped in her own body. It's a horrific thing to see. A lot of us are trapped in our own bodies. I'm talking about Wendy not to talk about Wendy. I'm talking about Wendy to talk about the people who are trapped in their own bodies. And again, I spent a lot of time, a lot of time, a lot of hours, many, many hours um, examining and digging in. And, you know, what I found was somebody that never fit in, even in her own family, right? And, and who found a thing that uh, gave her power, this microphone, right? And, and, and she got away with things on the microphone that she could never get away with in person and became uh, popular, you know, and that popularity transcended even the, the disdain that people might've had for her, even in her own family, right? They started liking her, you know, that, you know, that she was the black sheep, but then she's the one that's successful, even though her sister's a lawyer and her brother's a teacher, you know, it's like, and then you get to see, you know, that you, people will do whatever you want. Yes. And then that gets you drunk with power. And then, you know, and and all of that, you know, I'm, I'm watching so many of us who may not have the pinnacle of success. But I want to say this. I want to say this. Um, just like, I, you know, I was saying, you know, these folk aren't loyal. Demons are not loyal. The demons hate us. Do you know, like they, they hate us and they will use us. I'm watching Puffy right now. It's having a moment because you dance with the devil. The devil will show your ass up every time. However you want to play it, you know, you dance with this energy. It will expose you because that's the joy that it gets. You will fall every time, every time. And I look and, you know, we feel bad. Bill Cosby's like, I can't even go out anymore. But you did some things. You did some things. And I'm not litigating or not or judging or what have you, but you know <laughs> things were done. And if there's no accountability, it will happen. And the very thing that you danced with will take you out because yeah. it is not loyal to you. It just wants to expose you. So that's, I was asking a question about prayer because, you know, in some ways, I don't want the devil to win. I don't want the demons to win. I, I don't want them to win, which is why I can never be in league with the glee. You know, that runs counter. So it's like we, we, ha we have to do something different because that's always going to be the end. It's always yeah, going to be. Know, but you're you're not participating in it because what you're doing right now is both asking questions, uh, not of me necessarily only, but of us about what does this really mean and how can we live in these bodies with integrity? There is it is seductive, and this is the truth that evil. Um, wickedness, jealousy, envy, not only will it pursue you and it'll whisper um, lies that feel like sweet nothings in your ear, but most importantly, in your soul and in your mind, to the point that you can't tell the difference between the truth and a lie. And that is what you're talking about with some of the names that you've just called, that they became a part of the thing that ultimately destroyed them or exposed them. I mean, shame is something when we think of what is evil, shame is such an evil spirit. I mean, it humiliates. So humiliation, anything that humiliates the soul, anything that murders the integrity of the soul is evil. It is what's drowning people, but we don't have enough examples of what does it look like to be healthy, to be successful, and to not be for sale. 866-801-8255. I also want to spend a little time in karma. You know, I think we got that mixed up as well. And it's, it's very interesting, you know, how there's a lot of talk about karma. And I was like, mm, 
I don't know if it works exactly like that, but okay, let's let's have the conversation. Eight six six eight zero one eight two five five. I just I just want us to you know because the world that we live in right now make, make, gives a lot of um, uh, space for this kind for this kind of behavior, right? And and celebrates it. You know, it welcomes it. It enforces it, is, enforces it. Absolutely, yes. I don't know how y'all raising children these days, but it is, it's got to be hard everywhere they turn. You know, I was talking about it yesterday, how it shows up in terms of excellence. Like no one really wants to sit in the soil long enough. I was with a lawyer today and he's been doing this, you know, uh, contract law for real estate for 20 years. And he got, came out of college and he just fell into it. And so now he's like an expert. And he, he's like, it's so hard to get someone to apprentice in this one thing. But it's so necessary. And I was like, I get it. Everybody wants to, you know, even when I when I used to teach journalism, kids wanted to like go into PR and everyone wants to be PR with entertainment entertainment mm -hmm. people i'm like the best pr is con is is you know to to be a pr a rep for a major company because they're always they always need crisis managers that's where you're gonna make your money not out here with lady gaga and them you know beyonce and them everybody wants to do that but that's not you know that that's being sucked into something else but i just you know this whole karma it, thing too, it's I being separate. seduced again that it's the, it's being seduced and the karma thing you know somebody came up to me karen at healthy wealthy and wise, healthy, wealthy, wise. Uh, she came up and she said, you know, I can't believe you're here. And you may remember, Karen, there was a woman who lost her wallet, who had no ID. She found her way. I mean, she was determined to get to your retreat. And she came up to me and she said, I can't believe you're here. I want to tell you something. And she said, I will never forget when, Dr. Robin, when you said, that there are times where you have to ask God to kill the harvest because of what we have all put in the ground. And so karma is not really about what I put in the ground. It is both how I understand what I put in the ground and whether or not I have the courage <laughs> to say some of what I put in the ground, please do not let it come up. Not because, I mean, things don't grow, but because I realized that what seduced me, and see, we've got to be able to admit that we've been seduced by power, by beauty, um, by ugliness, you know, by money. And so if we can't ever acknowledge that, there's no way that I can ask for the harvest to be killed because I'm so busy defending what I put in the ground. And so today, to me, is about inviting people to look at what have you put in the ground and whether or not you want that stuff coming up. And if you don't want it coming up in you and your children and your money in your life, then you've got to do something about what you planted that you know is going to backfire. Oh, I love that. I love that. Let's take some calls. Dr. Robin is here. And I remember when you said that, because that was... A moment and um you know we had we had quite a few it was such a amazing uh time uh, yeah. a lot a lot for me as well and um i'm just grateful but it was all because of the people showing up so yes thank everyone for showing up let's go to jesse in florida jesse welcome to the karen hunter show it is wellness wednesday and we have a doctor in the house dr robin smith hey jesse hello Hi. Oh, are you talking to me? Are you Jesse? Oh, yeah, I'm so sorry. Wait a minute, Karen. I'm so sorry. Um, okay, I just want to make sure that you, that you heard me. Uh, you know, I you know, I come away often and I talk. I always talk to you, and the first thing that comes out of my mouth is that God has endowed you with wisdom. The, the show that you're talking about today, what you all are talking about today, it is so deep, and the Lord has brought you all with the, the the inspiration and the opening of your eyes and speaking truth. It's all about speaking truth. And and the Bible speaks about that. It speaks about the, the flesh, the, the things of the flesh. It talks about uh, what it says. It, it says the things of the flesh are, are, are adultery, sorcery, hatred, contention, jealousy, outbursts. That's, that's the being mean and, 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 and evil, a wrath, selfishness, ambitious, uh, uh, dissensions, 
heresy, envy, murder, drunkenness, railing, all, all and, and the like of stuff, which I tell you, they will have no part in the eternal God. And so keep on speaking it, Karen. Keep on speaking it when your host come on. Everything you all saying today, the Holy Spirit is all over you all. Speak it. Keep speaking and keep telling it. Okay, Jesse. Uh, thank you. Let me let me say I was hesitant um, because I, I'm not you know going to throw religion because it's not religion, and I'm not throwing the Bible. Although I do, you know, I pull things like I pull from everything. You know, we pull from everything. Just like Socrates learned what he learned in Africa. So did the folk that wrote the Bible learn. Some, Jesus spent time. In, how long was he missing in, in, in Africa? How long was he missing in Africa? These were not Torah-like things that Jesus came to the table with, which is why they hung him on the cross. These were, the thing that Socrates was talking about was not part of the Greek uh, philosophy. That's why he had to take that hemlock. These things do not come you know, easily because they make people uncomfortable. I wanted to talk about the the demons, not from, you know, a a spooky standpoint where we're talking about the exorcist, even though I do use that word because we need to exorcise the things in us. But that's a a work that we have to do in ourselves. Like we started off, people have to check themselves, but it's so much easier to watch other people's lives and other people's sufferings because then yours doesn't look so bad. And it doesn't matter, you know, whether somebody has 10 times more heartache and pain than you do. If you have a little bit that needs to be attended to, that's yours. Don't you want to deal with yours instead of, you know, watching other people's? And what is it? You know, you better check yourself before you wreck yourself. And then the other, which is who's going to check me, boo? Well, see, the thing is, who's going to check me, boo? Am I going to check myself? That's what and that's why I said the prayer really is about, do I have courage to see myself? Not to see Wendy Williams, but do I have courage to see me and maybe to see pieces of Wendy in me? Someone could say, oh, I'm I'm nothing like her. And as soon as I hear any of us talk about how unlike someone we are, I know something about that person that they haven't been able to see that there is something in each of us that needs to be exposed to the self, not by the world. If people could have called a thing a thing, then we wouldn't know everything about their business right now because they would have gotten clear and done some work. And I can tell you, there are people who I know who have done their work. And there are famous people who we don't know what is going on with them. You know why? Because they are sitting somewhere very quietly on uh, disrobing and calling something what it is. And so when we don't do that, it eventually catches up with us and destroys us or tries to. So let me say this. Uh, we're going to go to a break and Dr. Robin's sticking around and we'll take calls as well as well on this Wednesday because uh, I want to speak life into Wendy today. She, mm-hmm. yeah, when I tell you um, to have the kind of vision that this woman had, she, she called the futuristic vision to, to as a little girl wanting to see herself in a certain craft. When I talk about crafting a life, but to craft a life absent of community, absent of true grounding in something real to craft a life. Um, But that's a power though. She had a superpower because she got to a place that many of us will never see on her own whims and in her own headspace and, and to her fault, to a fault, like spent, spent time imagining where she wanted to be and then storyboarding her life. Mm -hmm. That is something that we can all take a piece from, but it's in that solitude in that in that distrust of everything around you because when you distrust people at that level that means you're not trustworthy yourself you are s- telling the world about you right yeah. i just want to encourage people um yeah the world is horrible but we need each other um i just had a this situation come up where a person made a decision and didn't didn't seek counsel and i'm like this is not a decision that you that you're gonna really regret this decision and i know you didn't ask anybody who or you don't have anyone in your life that's going to give you good sound advice that you can trust mm-hmm. but this is a bad choice that you're making right now and i can't tell you other than to say that that you may regret this 
but you know, I wish you well. But I'm just like, man, how many of us don't have wise counsel? How many yes. of us are, have a life of people who are just there telling us what we want to hear because we have set the table because you set the table for that. Yes. I'm going to tell you this, you know, with my full chest, I surround myself with people who are going to check. Even Smith checks me. Like I open the door. I want to be checked. I give people yeah. the power to check me because I can't see everything about me. Do you know what I'm saying? When I'm going down the wrong path, I welcome that. And so I'm grateful that I have people around me that are going to be like, mm -mm, no, no, that's the wrong way. And I ask for it, you know. But, but that's also a sign of your internal security because people who are secure can tolerate and welcome feedback. I mean, feedback is really just somebody being in touch. Dr. Robin, it's, it's not hard. None of us are perfect. So if you start with that premise, with this life, just like we learned how to walk, how many times did we fall? We don't remember it. That's your entire life. It's yeah. falling, falling and getting your ass back up, figuring it out. But your parents hopefully were holding you. You know, when I learned how to ride a bike, my daddy was behind me. And then before I knew it, he let go. And I was like, oh, I'm doing it. But I fell, bust my ass a few times. But I'm saying none of us are perfect. So to even have the notion that no one can have a perspective that you like to me, that's crazy to yeah. think that no but one has common. a different. It might be crazy, but it's common. It is common that people cannot say what you just said, which is not only no one is perfect, but I am not perfect. 